right at the top, and then you've got your organization this way. And so, if this is your strong leg over here, and this is your weak, this is how you maximize the comp plan the way that, that I do. Okay, does everybody understand what strong and weak is, right? I mean, and it's pretty simple. I mean, the, it's, the strong leg has more volume on it. The numbers are bigger. So in my mind, I don't make money off of the coaches that I put on my strong leg, the volume that they bring. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Yeah. No. Sometimes that confuses people. If you sign a coach and you put them in the strong leg, it's not really a leg that you're earning money off of anyway because it's, it's you, you earn money off of your weak leg and the profit leg. So if you sign Rockstar over there and they start bringing in all of this volume, you already had more volume than you could use anyway. So that doesn't really work, right? So you want rock stars in a spot where you earn money. So I put, I put, uh, I'm gonna say wife. It looks like for everybody, almost everybody, husband, but for me it's wife, okay? And so I come down here, and once this leg is, is adequately supported and I feel like that these people are being well taken care of, then when I sign these coaches over here, everybody generally builds in a strong, in, in a straight line, right? But I come in and I start building right here with my coaches. Right? Oh, that didn't clean up at all. Okay, so my people come down here. And so I don't, so this is my weak leg. So again, just how I showed you earlier. So now my wife cycles. She's a diamond, so for every 100 points, she makes $18. And I make $19.80 instead of just making 18 Because if I put it all the way down here, then my wife wouldn't have cycled because this is going to be her strong leg. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I would have only made eighteen dollars because I put them here for every hundred points. It turns into thirty-seven eighty. <laughs> we can we can go over it until everybody understands. Yes, I, I, I understand how you think the weak leg. Is there a point where you decide? Okay, because I know as far as getting a diamond, you want to you want to rank. You say to yourself, okay, once my strong leg has four coaches or eight coaches, then I can just focus on. Yeah, that's a great question, and I was talking with Julie about that earlier. Um, the way that I tell my coaches to build is, you know, your first. First of all, two coaches, right? And then, and then, and if those coaches are coaches that you control, then it's one coach on each side, and then four or five on your profit side. Okay, I don't bounce back and forth because I build where I'm going to earn money. So if and, and then once you get to four in your profit leg, then I'm like, okay, let's let's shoot for diamond and come back over here. So and once I make diamond. You know, on my team, if you looked at my coach's genealogy, then it's going to be something along the lines of five or six coaches on one side and 16 to 20 on the other side because that's where you earn your money is on the profit side. Right? You want to have a little cushion there. You don't want to have, you know, 20 coaches in one leg and three in the other and fall to emerald or ruby. You know, with 23 coaches, that would be terrible. But four coaches, five, or, you know, make sure you keep four. But five or six to keep your buffer, and then build on that other side so you're earning money. Yes, ma'am. So when, for example, you have a new coach and you're trying to help them get to Emerald, and we mm -hmm. always know one on the left, one on the right, mm -hmm. and for the longest time, my preferred placement was left or right. Uh -huh. I didn't have any conception of outside or anything. Uh -huh. So when you're telling your brand new coaches who this is completely foreign to, how to put their preferred placement, it only says weak outside leg or, well, I forget what the other terminology is mm -hmm. at the bottom, and then there's right or left. So you tell them to do weak outside. Mm -hmm. no, so what, what, do you, what do you do then yeah, for Here's them? what I do. I, I call, and I'm like, okay, log in your back office. <coughs> and, and I'll show you this later when we, when we have the, the computer. I'm like, okay, log in your back office. I want you to go to graphical genealogy. I want you to go to, and, and then when they, if they're brand new, they go to graphical genealogy, they're sitting there in their little blue shirt, right? <laughs> and and they've, got, they've got two spots next to it. And I say, okay, which one's red? And, and they tell me which one is red, and and then I tell them because the red one that the red person shows you that's where your next coach is going to go. All of the empty spots are blue. The red one means this is where your next coach is going to go. And I make them click on the spot where I want it to be. Let's say I'm going to have them put that first one in a strong way, <laughs> and and so I make them click on that red spot, and it's going to say so you want to change your preferred placement to here, 
and, and it was already there. But I said, I said, yes, I want you to do that because what it does is it takes it off of automatic placement and tells the computer, tells the back office now, okay, this is where I'm going to build from, from then on, you know, until I move it again. So I, I use only the graphical genealogy. Okay, so you don't use the set preferred placement in the COO. You go to look at that. I only that's use the graphical genealogy. Oh, okay. That's fine. This might that's be my last question, but probably. <laughs> so um, you're saying that we should build all the way, like almost like on the edge, mm -hmm. for the most of the time, unless we want to do something strategic. Until you get to somebody you love. Until we get to someone we love. <laughs> but we don't love all of them. No. no. Okay. Okay. Now, so are you telling me that I need to just build build out here? Like, so I need to do preferred placement on the outside every time on the outside. Yes. Until I love someone. Yes. See, this is this is. So are you? Uh, what's the bullshit? Are you Erica? Yes, I am. Okay. So yeah. So these people. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have put these people in right here. Yeah, so because because see now the, these people here, there's not anybody going to be building underneath them. The, assuming everybody at top you know, puts, follows the same strategy, and there's only very few people on your team that are going to be able to build. So we want to build on the outside and not necessarily volumize the whole structure. No, yeah, absolutely not. Okay. Beach, Beachbody would love for you to do that okay. because because um, people earn less money doing that. But, you know, and so those people, honestly, Erica, those are people that I would reach out to um, if they really want to work the business and be like, hey, you know what, we might want to talk about moving you. And, and I'm going to put you over here where you can, because you know, we adopted a coach uh, or inherited a coach that um, was on the inside leg of an inactive coach that was in for like three days. And, um, and he, he really started moving the business, really started saying, hey, I want to work this business. Um, and got four success goal points, and this is this is right at the edge of where he would do this. We got four success goal points last month, and I was like, hey, Mark, you know, you're really starting to pick things up here. You haven't done anything for two years, and, and, uh, and you know, and you're, you've been an orphan, so I really haven't messed with it, but it looks like you're about to start working here. And he's like, yeah, you know, I was, I, time's right for me, yada, yada, yada. He had like 12 customers. Um, I was like, well, you know what, you should quit and sign back up under Cody, because um, that's who he was sponsored by, because Cody inherited him. And, um, and that's what he did. He quit, we moved him into a spot where we were building. He, he captured all of those 12 people. They were all pretty close to him anyway. So as soon as he quit, Cody inherited those 12, but then they sent emails saying, make Mark Bolt my coach. And so he got them back. And now, you know, in his strong leg, he's got like eight or 12 coaches underneath him that my team is with him. No, you don't have to wait six months if you're signing up with the same person. Oh, so he wasn't coding, he was back with coding, just on a different leg. Correct. Just where they were building. Yes. Hey, when you were talking about the 16 to 12 coaches, I assume that's your strong leg, and then the 5 and 6, that's on your weak leg. Is that right? No, it would be yeah. the opposite of that, because, because, okay, because so I'm talking about PS coaches. Right. So I'm talking about... 5 to 6 is going to be your strong... Yeah, yeah, that's going to be, I'm going to put the least amount of coaches on the side where everybody's still going. Okay. Where I'm building by myself is where I'm going to be focusing most of my people. Yes. So, 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 I want everybody to get to diamond, um, and and you know there are some coach. You know I'm just I'm not even gonna say some the, the other strategy behind that because it's bad for business. But so I tell all my people to get to diamond, and 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 it may you know they may get to diamond and, and they're like okay where's why is there no money falling from the sky in diamond you know this is, but that's not how the business works. But when you get to diamond. There's a couple of things that you do. You, you've created the business building behaviors that you needed to do to get there, but then you you have that, and once you start holding that rank too, you know you get to diamond, and then you're able to tell your people, look, I need you, you need to get to diamond, just like I did, so that so that it boosts rank throughout. Does that, does that make sense? I mean, 
You know, you want you want you you want to get to diamond because sometimes with this strategy, so let me back up for a second. I can just say this. With this, when I talk to about this strategy with some of my people, you know, I'll have emerald coaches who'll be like, "Ooh, this is smart. I'm gonna make my husband a diamond because I make more money when my husband becomes a diamond than I do, right? Because he's below me." But I'm like, that's not a good plan because, I mean, it, it, you'll actually earn more money in the short term doing that, but you're going to really annoy your upline, you know, your personal sponsored coach, because they want you to promote to Diamond so they can promote. And, and so you're going to want to do that because you're going to want your coaches to do the same thing too, right? When you make Diamond and you start going for multi-star Diamond and stuff like that, you don't want them, you want to be able to say, this is how I did it. This is what I want you to do. When you're trying to go two star, you've got one star, one diamond, and over here, you know, you have an emerald who made their spouse diamond. It would be very frustrating. So, well, it makes it makes sense money wise, but it doesn't make sense uh, in, in the other aspects. Business. Yeah, it's, it's just bad leadership. It's bad leadership. Um, okay, so yes. So um, I'm kind of an orphan coach. Okay. Um, too, and I'm I just I'm diamond, so I've sat there, but awesome. um, I don't really have a strong weak leg. It okay. Changes, like every week, one side stronger than the other one. Okay. Flops. Um, but I do have you know I'm working with my coaches now, my my emeralds to move up. So, what would be my best strategy <coughs> for placing like people who come to me now ready to sign up with a coach now? That's actually. Um, that's like you're in a better position. I mean, you, you have to create all your volume yourself, but you don't have to really worry about where you place coaches, right? I mean, you will hear a lot of times that people say that the, the optimal volume is is a two-to-one ratio, you know, and, and I would say that, you know, a one-to-one ratio is, is the best because you leave no points on the table. That carryover volume sits there and it's not really being used, but if you use it every week and, like, you know, you have no carryover volume, that's awesome. And the other great thing about that is you can put coaches wherever and you're gonna earn money, right? A lot of people, you'll see some people, some people will talk about like nine star being the sweet spot because they'll have two diamonds in one side and <coughs> seven in the other because that's where they earn their money. So that's why they put coaches. But somebody like you and me sometimes, depending on how, you know, who's doing what in my organization, I can put coaches wherever I want and, and, and I'm gonna earn money. So you have a lot more freedom than somebody who has a, a really designated strong way. Yes? So whenever you sign up you know, working with a building replay, uh -huh. how do you try to get how do you decide which side you look at I look at where my volume is, so let me finish I'll finish drawing out my um, so, if I'm going to sign a coach and I have a, just one business center, and, and, and they're, they're going to, if, 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 if they're going, if I have um, a, a spouse account here, and my spouse account is in my weak side, then I put my coaches in the third week leg, right? assuming that this leg is, is, is built out. A weak leg will be the right one? Well, it doesn't. I mean, I, I don't know if it's going to be right or left. It's going to be, you know, the leg that that, that person is getting less volume on. But generally, it's the inside leg. But if you sign a rock star on the inside leg, then you know your legs can flop, and, and, and that changes. So it's just I, I put new coaches where the volume is, where where my volume is is lower. This is really. can do it too. It's a little more challenging, you know. But there's there's something really. I mean, it's pretty cool to be, you know, the, the genesis of the organization. Um, 
if you don't have any coaches being placed um, in your organization, that you don't know where they came from. So if you do have a person on you that you're like, I have no idea who that is, you're not an orphan. Right. Okay. <laughs> I'm clearly not an orphan. I'm clearly not an orphan. I'm like, yeah, I'm going I down. Imagine that they're probably a little bit more on orphans. Um, you know, they're, and they're less and less in, in, in the business. What happens? Um, Mike's like, four you know, is, is away when, on my left leg. What creates an orphan is that somebody shows up and, and before they. Before they really start to understand genealogy, they just go crazy and they sign 15 coaches and they just go everywhere. Um, you know, that creates an orphan. And then more uh, more commonly, orphans are when somebody just signs <coughs> one coach or two coaches, generally one, and, and then quits. And then that person is, is sitting in there. And so really for those people, I mean, if they're really interested in working in the business, then, then I'll, I'll figure out a way. To, I'll be like, hey, you know what, I'll, let's go buy, I'll buy you dinner. So now, if you've got a strong leg and you put, let's say, your dad over here, right? Same theory. Dad is in your strong leg. And generally, when you put coaches over here in your strong leg, you don't earn any money, right? Off of the volume that they bring in, right? right? Okay. But if I build right here, dad earns money. I technically don't, but dad does, dad is you. and dad is me. <laughs> so dad, dad makes 18, and I make $1.80, right? It's not much, but I get that 10% matching bonus. <coughs> so dad makes 18, I make, so now I make Explain that matching bonus, please. As a diamond, I make 10%, or as a diamond, you make 10% of what your coaches make off of team cycle bonus. Another incentive to yeah. diamonds. Right. And the rubies make 5%. But so so now instead of signing up, you know, the next the next you know rock star down here, all the way at the bottom of my strong leg, where I'm not gonna make a lick of money off of what they make, except for matching bonus, except for a dollar easy, and put them over here. And if they put if you, they do that same thousand points of volume we were talking about. Dad makes a hundred of these, and I make eighteen. Yes, ma'am. So does Dad have to be diamond? Dad has to be at least emerald to cycle. Dad has to be at least emerald, and and um and so you know that's one of the things. I I do talks like this. this is the first time I've actually flown to some place to, to do this talk. <laughs> but I mean I've done this talk with so many top ten coaches um, over Zoom or or whatever, and and you know so maybe if Maybe this, I say this not to, to, my right you know, my own horn, but to make you guys feel better where I can't tell you how many top 10 coaches that I've looked at their organization and went, why is your husband not an emerald? And why are you building over she here? If you make him an emerald, so then they're all did they sign up within the last three days? No. Uh. <laughs> so one of those people is my husband, and the other one is sitting right next to me. And she's got quite a bit. I mean, I'm thinking if I were to have 